Russia has carried out missile strikes on cities across Ukraine, including the capital, Kyiv, in what appears to be the most widespread set of attacks since the early weeks of the war. Missiles have hit central Kyiv as the capital was targeted for the first time in months. At least eight people have been killed in just one district. Ukraine's Air Force spokesman says Russia has fired 83 missiles at targets in Ukraine so far and that the attacks are still ongoing. Arise chief correspondent John Cookson has this report. Russian missiles rained down on Ukraine as air raid sirens sounded in virtually every major city. Explosions rocked the capital, Kiev, for the first time in months. Blasts were reported in the city's Shevchenko district, a large area in the center of Kiev that includes several government offices and the historic Old Town. After the initial blitz, more explosions were heard later in the morning. The Ukrainian government claimed Russia launched 83 rockets in total in a barrage of strikes across the country. A number of civilian targets were hit in a move designed to spread fear among Ukrainian families already used to months of war. The number of dead and injured are still being counted. A target included this newly opened bridge through a park in Kiev, which was blown to smithereens. A children's play area was also targeted. A few hours later, the playground would have been full of youngsters. Ukraine's President Zelensky addressed his nation and recorded his statement in front of the presidential office in Kiev. They seek panic and chaos, Zelensky said, but we are Ukrainians helping each other. We believe in ourselves. We will destroy everything that was destroyed, he said. Now there may be temporary interruptions to electricity, but there will never be interruptions with certainty, the certainty of victory. Russia's blitz on Ukraine comes after Saturday's attack on the Kirsch Bridge, which connects Russia with occupied Crimea. President Putin described the assault as an act of terror. Today, Ukraine suffered as Putin unleashed his revenge. And there are fears today's blitz marks a major escalation of the war. John Cookson, Arise News. Now, speaking a short while ago, Russian President Vladimir Putin described the barrage of missile fire on Ukrainian cities as a response to terrorist attacks on Russian territory. And uh, we will now be joined. By its action, the Kiev regime has de facto put itself in a row with international terrorist formations, with most heinous groups. To leave such crimes with no response is just not possible anymore. This morning, on the advice of the Defense Ministry and according to a plan from the General Staff, a massive strike was carried out with high-precision, long-range weapons, from air, sea and land, on energy, military command and communications facilities in Ukraine. Arise Chief Correspondent John Cookson joins us now from London for more. John, good to see you. What sort of impact will the Russian rocket attacks have on the Ukrainian people? Hi ladies, good to see you. Well, uh, as you know, I spent some time in Ukraine earlier this year when the war uh, broke out and I can tell you from what I picked up from the Ukrainian people is that, you know, they'll bury their dead, they'll see their injured in hospital and they'll repair what they can repair and then get on with their lives uh, and uh, continue uh, the, the fight uh, against this uh, Russian occupation and invasion and attack on their country, buoyed, of course, by their own President uh, uh, Zelensky. Uh, they, the attacks that we've seen already uh, has had a huge impact on, on the centers of, of key cities, including Kiev, but it's spread across uh, the nation from Lviv in, in the west to Kharkiv uh, in the east and Zaboritsa down in the south. And the, the other point I would make on, on the images that we've received is that these we've seen attacks uh, footage uh, from the center of cities, but uh, crucial also are uh, the uh, missiles that have hit power plants and water plants in the country. Now, generally speaking, uh, you're not allowed to film around these, uh, uh, these sites, and so we're unlikely to get images of that, but I understand the lights have already gone out in, in Kharkiv, the electricity supply has more or less been cut and this will have a, 
a huge impact uh, on, on the country, of course, uh, uh, to be without electricity. And presumably this is uh, one of the methods that uh, President Putin is using. So far, he hasn't been able to defeat the Ukrainian army uh, and the rest of its military. So attack the infrastructure is, is, is the kind of the low hanging fruit that he's been able to uh, hit. 83 missiles were used. Uh, it's costing between $1 million and $13 million each. So this was a, a major enterprise uh, by the Russians to try to regain uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the upper hand, as it were, having suffered that attack on, on, on the Kirsch Bridge on Saturday, a symbol of Russian imperialism. Uh, linking uh, Russia with uh, occupied uh, Crimea. This would have had uh, a, a very devastating attack, on a personal attack on, on Putin, who uh, actually put a lot of effort and a lot of money into building that bridge. And it was uh, the day after his 70th birthday, the symbolism of the attack on, on the Kirsch Bridge would, would have been huge on, on Putin. And as I said in my report, this is his revenge, and also in the last uh, hour or so, uh, Dmitry Medvedev, former president of Russia, now the deputy uh, uh, head of the Security Council, said this is this is just the beginning. So, the Ukrainians, they knew something was coming after the Kirsch Bridge was attacked, and and they now know uh, if uh, they continue to have a, a deep impact on the Russian military, then this is. What we've seen today, we're going to see more of these attacks on, on Ukraine. So a very depressing outlook uh, for the Ukrainian people. Absolutely. It looks like things are escalating quickly. Now, how is the Ukrainian president most likely to respond to this? He's already responded and, and given a, a morale-boosting address on, on TV outside the presidential palace. There were reports earlier that uh, the palace was hit, or well, clearly uh, it was not. Uh, he's already been talking to Western leaders and been urging them uh, to, to speed up uh, some of the military uh, uh, effort that uh, is going into uh, Ukraine. Uh, he's spoken with President Macron of France, who's, who, who pledged uh, a continued support for Ukraine. He's also spoken with uh, Chancellor Olaf Schulz, who had a similar message uh, for Zelensky. Uh, the UK's Foreign Secretary, James Cleverly, uh, says the attacks were unacceptable and a demonstration of Russia's weakness rather than its strength. Uh, but Putin, uh, but uh, Zelensky will also speak to other G7 leaders uh, later today uh, uh, and urge uh, Western uh, countries to, as I say, to uh, enhance the, the military equipment that they're already supplying. But crucially, air defense systems are, are, are urgently needed uh, by Ukraine. Some from America are due to arrive in November, which uh, still leaves a window for further attacks uh, by, by Putin until November. But uh, uh, Zelensky may also ask for uh, warplanes, which uh, NATO will be reluctant to do. He's, he's made that request uh, several times so he can secure the air over Ukraine. But uh, I, I think that will be a step too far for NATO countries who are, are reluctant to escalate the war even further. Indeed. Now, President Putin is meeting with his Security Council today. Do you have any predictions on what he's likely to tell them? Well, Putin is meeting. His, his, his coterie uh, as cracks seem to appear in, in the administration. We mentioned the attack on, on, the, on the Kirsch Bridge, which was a huge blow to, to Russian morale, surely. Uh, and there are also uh, uh, hardliners like the Chechen leader, or the leader of the Wagner group, who are even calling for the leaders of the Russian military to be taken away and shot and, and replaced. So uh, uh, Putin has to assure them that, that it's a war uh, that he can win. And uh, although what we received already on the international uh, uh, video circuits is, is Putin in uh, St. Petersburg meeting uh, with, with virtually with, with other members of the Security Council. We don't get all of that meeting, so this is what I'm, I, I'm, I'm suggesting. He's, he told them that, uh, you know, there could be more attacks to come and, and the, the war can be won. He wants to assure those around him because, of course, he doesn't want to 
or risk a, 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 any kind of coup. Of course, several consultations going on across the board. The UN General Assembly is also uh, set to meet to discuss Ukraine. What do you think the outcome of that will be? Yeah, this meeting was already on the cards. It was already scheduled. But of course, it will now focus on, on the attack today uh, by uh, Russian missiles on, on Ukraine. There will be a lot of condemnation, of course, uh, from uh, uh, a number of countries about what happened. I think... Um, what Putin will want to do is to see what reaction there is from, say, China or India or some African nations, including Nigeria. Will they sit on the fence or will they also join in the condemnation uh, of what's happened today? And so it's going to be a, a very interesting meeting of the General Assembly. They'll uh, no doubt pass resolutions, uh, non-binding, of course, but uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, the outcome will be uh, a resolution of condemnation of, of this latest attack. But as far as Putin's concerned, he'll be more focused on, on, on seeing what the representatives from uh, certain countries uh, have to say at this uh, meeting in New York later today. It starts at 7 o'clock uh, London and Nigeria time. All right, that's uh, John Cookson, arrived Chief Correspondent. Thank you so much for keeping, up, keeping us abreast uh, as things unfold.